Mike Panaki here. And recently I was tagged in a LinkedIn post that had a wire map from a Fluke Networks DSX cable analyzer that looked like the one we see up here on the screen. Now, when we look at that, that can be awfully confusing as far as what's going on. Are all these pairs shorted together? Is there some huge wiring mistake? Well, there is. There is a huge wiring mistake. So let's back up and let's talk about the proper way to wire a connection. We're going to start out by taking a look at the T568B wiring code. Now, you may use 568A, you may use 568B. Hey, pick one, stick with it, you'll be okay. But in this case, with 568B, what we find is that pair 1 is on pins 4 and 5. Pair 2 is on 1 and 2. Pair 3 is on 3 and 6. And pair 4 is on 7 and 8. Now what this does is this ensures that we are taking the data pairs, which are 1, 2, 3, 6, 4, 5, and 7, 8, and putting them on the same twisted pairs so that a data pair is on a twisted pair. That twist helps cancel out the crosstalk. Everything is good. The problem we run into is some people don't follow that wiring standard. And that is where a split pair cable comes in. Now the split pair cable is a cable where continuity wise, everything looks okay. One's wired to one, two's wired to two, three's wired to three, etc. The issue comes in that our data pairs are split across multiple twisted pairs. So essentially, we have all of these wires running in parallel to each other. They're, the twist isn't there to help cancel out the crosstalk. What it reminds me of is back in the day when I was a network administrator and someone said they moved their desk they couldn't figure out why their computer didn't work. And I said, well, how'd you extend your network cable? And they said, oh, I just grabbed this silver cable and ran it over there. And they used silver satin telephone wire, which had no twists and caused a massive amount of crosstalk. So a split pair cable is going to cause a lot of crosstalk. Now, all too often, we find that people might use something like a little tester like this. I bought this a long time ago. It's a optical power meter. And I don't know where my little end piece went. Let me grab this. It's got this little piece that I can put on the end. I can do a wire map. Now, when we test this cable, this split pair of cable with that tester, what we see is that all eight pins look fine. The continuity is great because that doesn't measure crosstalk. So what I did is I tested this with a few different testers. So here we see the Fluke Network's Link IQ Duo. Now this does both copper and Wi-Fi testing. And we see that when we run the test on here, it tells us split pair. Next, I tested the same cable with the Fluke Network's Micro Scanner PoE. And it too tells us we have a split pair. So I moved on to my Net Ally Link Runner AT2000. Here we see that the Link Runner AT2000 can detect that this is a split pair cable. And finally, I tried it with the new Net Ally Link Runner AT4000. Now the Link Runner AT3000 and 4000 are replacements for the 2000, and they can detect the split pair. So what they're doing is they're looking at the crosstalk on these cables and they're seeing, is that crosstalk way too high? And if it is, that's a good indication that we have a split pair cable. So let's go back to our DSX cable analyzer. And if I come over here to performance and I click on that, just as we talked about, look at our near end crosstalk right there we've got a negative 55.8 dB crosstalk. When we get into the negative range, that is below the limit line. And in fact, if I click on that, we can see that we're way down here below the limit line for all of our pairs. So there's our limit. There's our results. Now, 
I always like to show you what a good example looks like. So if I come back here, here's a CAT6 permanent link test that I did where everything passed. I come into my wire map, we see my wire map is good. And if I look at my performance, I can see that my near end crosstalk came out looking like we expect. Everything's above that limit line. So when we see something, let me go back to it, like this on a DSX cable analyzer, that can be a good indication that we are seeing a split pair cable. A cheap continuity only tester will pass this. But if we have a tool that looks at near end crosstalk, it's going to call out that split pair cable. And that's an indication that we need to rewire both ends of that cable. Hope you found this video helpful. If you want, subscribe. You'll get notified when new videos come out. And check out some of the other videos I've got on network troubleshooting.